So uh, my name is uh, Robinson Tryon, um, and um, I work on multiple projects, um, including uh, LibreOffice. Um, worked on a lot of different um, things uh, in the past. Uh, but right now I work for uh, the Lot Network, which is the License on Transfer Network. And we um, help companies deal with patent trolls, which is something that um, hopefully a lot of you haven't had to experience firsthand. Um, so have any of you guys, uh, if you want to, you don't have to, but uh, have any of you guys been sued by a patent troll? Had your company sued by a patent troll? Awesome. This is great. <laughs> this is good news. So this is preemptive, right? So if, you, if your company is already dealing with patents um, as a hypothetical, that's great. But if your company is already dealing with patents because something's happening, um, you want to you uh, sort of plan ahead. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk a bit today about, i got to keep close here, um, <laughs> about uh, patent trolls, uh, damages, um, risk, um, a little bit, bit about who's already in our network, and um, some other aspects, licenses, um, and, and benefits um, to uh, businesses and community. Um, so um, uh, yeah, and I have a, a few little pieces. Um, if any of you guys have any questions as I go, feel free to raise your hand um, or throw something at me. Um, there are two screens, so um, I'll be, I guess, focusing mostly on this one. But um, yeah, if, if, if you're waving over here, I'm not going to see you. So yeah, this side, throw things at me. Um, I think I have good peripheral vision, but we'll see. So, um, so the Lot Network, uh, as I, I think I mentioned, is a nonprofit. So it was, uh, it was created a couple of years ago. We're relatively young. Um, it was created as a way to help reduce uh, the risk of patent trolls. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could create a space in which everyone from startups to large companies could flourish, um, whether they have a strategy involving a lot of patents or a few patents. Um, we wanted to basically take a very holistic approach to patents um, and say, what can we do to solve one small piece of the puzzle, which is patent trolls. So um, the lot network um, is, um, I think, um, a great um, a great uh, tool that has learned in some ways from um, the freedom of source software community um, in terms of ideals like collaboration, um, cooperation, and um, egalitarianism in a lot of ways. So a lot of strategies in the past regarding patents maybe have had uh, different structures saying um, we're going to have some companies be deciders, some companies be the movers and shakers, and everyone else is followers. Whereas with the Lot Network, everyone is really regarded as equals. If you have a startup that has one employee or two employees, you have maybe one patent, which you uh, got by you know, selling your car and paying for a patent application, um, we see you on the same realm as someone like Google, who has countless patents, has patent attorneys. Um, you are protected um, and have the same um, immunization, as we like to say, um, against all the um, hundreds of thousands of patents in our network. Um, we have um, just over 100 um, companies in the network, so we're still relatively small. Um, there's some other projects. Uh, Dev works for Open Invention Network that has thousands of members. Um, we hope soon to be at the thousands of members mark. Um, may maybe Deb will make us a cake. <laughs> Deb's like, no, no. Made some bacon? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so uh, the Open Invention Network, I'm going to talk a little about later. Um, but um, I think one of the great things, again, about our community um, is that instead of trying to think about being exclusionary, um, we in the Lot Network like to think about how we can be collaborative with other, um, uh, other projects and other approaches to dealing with patents and patent trolls. So um, hopefully many of you were at Deb's talk yesterday about the Open Invention Network. Um, and if not, I would encourage you to look into what they do as well, because um, if you are in a startup or you are in a company um, in any sphere, really, because um, patents and software are, are basically uh, coming into light bulbs, they're coming into our pockets, they're coming into our cars. So really, patents are something that um, everyone, if, you, if you're in business at all, um, is something that you should at least have in the back of your mind and often is something that you should have a strategy. So um, what is a patent troll? So um, again, um, I don't think there's any video on you guys, so, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, no risk here. But um, are all you guys familiar with what patents are and patent trolls? Do you have a little bit of an idea? This is awesome. Cool. Um, so, uh, so you guys uh, understand a bit about the basics of patent trolls. The Lot Network makes a definition so that we can talk in terms of our licensing and be very precise. So for us, we define a patent troll um, as, a, as a company, as a patent holder, um, in combination with its affiliates that makes 50% or more of its revenue excuse me, um, with patent assertion, um, with basically acting um, 
um, in terms of suing their companies uh, or issuing demand letters for um, patents. Um, one of the problems with patent trolls, as many of you know, is that they don't produce products, they don't provide services. So this is something that um, is, I think, difficult for some people to wrap their minds around because they think of a company and they think that it, um, it accomplishes something tangible, or even if it doesn't accomplish something tangible today, um, it provides a service, right? Like providing web hosting or something else in bits and, um, bits and bytes. But trolls don't work that way, right? They have patents um, and they use those to extract money from companies, which is why we call them trolls, because they act like that troll under the bridge. The issue is that this isn't really uh, um, great for um, our sphere and freedom of software um, because um, we can't um, collaborate with them or reason with them, essentially, in any way. Um, why does this matter? Uh, because um, trolls exist in vast numbers. In fact, they have uh, exploded over the last few years. Um, I packed a lot of information on the slide, so um, and hopefully you can see that blue there, but um, uh, that's 84.1%. Uh, but basically, trolls are draining billions of dollars from the US economy each year, and that's coming from companies of all sizes, um, from tiny startups up to huge multinationals. Um, and what that's really doing is that is um, reducing the pool of companies that are creating new products and innovating. It is discouraging companies from striking out, from uh, innovators from, from going out and thinking, hey, I'm going to work on self-driving cars. Hey, I'm going to work on, say, 3D printing, right? Um, there are a lot of patents in a lot of different spheres that are discouraging um, a lot of smart um, inventors um, and a lot of smart people from even stepping foot into that space. I've talked to a number of people um, just at this conference um, in the last couple of days who have said, you know, I would, I would love for our company to become more visible. I would love for our company to step into new products. But we have done preliminary investigation into certain spheres. And we are quite afraid that someone is going to sue us over that, that especially a patent troll, is going to sue us over some of that technology. And we're not equipped, and we don't have um, the capital or the time, or the, definitely not the experience, uh, to deal with them. So um, they, um, a consistent message I'm hearing is that companies are really looking um, for ways to, to deal with patent trolls um, so they can get on and do their business. Um, yeah, that graph is kind of staggering um, how, many, uh, um, how many lawsuits have been filed. And most of them are filed in Texas, where I moved in 2015. And then um, a few months later, I joined uh, the Lot Network, which was kind of a weird, harmonious thing. I, I, uh, I moved there, um, uh, my girlfriend lives down there, uh, and, uh, and then I had this opportunity to join the Lot Network, and I looked on a map, and most, I'm, I don't know how familiar you guys are with patent trolls and how patent trolling works in the United States, but most of the lawsuits are filed in Marshall, Texas, East Texas, which is basically two hours uh, due east of Dallas. So I'm, I'm hoping to go on a road trip sometime um, and kind of see what's going on there, um, maybe take like a picture of a patent troll in the wild. Um, ice skating, yes. So, uh, so that, that was what I was going to mention too. That's ridiculous. But um, a number of companies have found they are called, they are summoned essentially to um, the Eastern District Court uh, in Marshall, Texas, to defend against patent troll suits. And this has happened uh, frequently enough um, that a number of companies, uh, for example, Samsung, have um, funded civic improvement in the area, which is which is great. They're being involved. One of their civic improvements was, believe it or not, an ice skating rink. Now, I, uh, I heard from a guy out there, you know, this is on Reddit, so I, I'm not sure, I'll, I'll try to, I'll, I think I'll believe him. He says it's only in the winter, and Texas can get a little bit cool in the winter, so that's fair, but still it's Texas. And he said the other thing is that it is emblazoned on every single square piece with Samsung logos. <laughs> so, you know, like the ice rink, when they have like the logo, I think it's like every piece and all of the boards on the side are all, um, are all emblazoned with Samsung logos. So. Um, Patent trolling has, has gone to, um, uh, I would say, sort of devolved to this absurdist uh, kind of realm um, with how much patent trolls are affecting small companies and even um, a company that, for me, for example, it's, it's hard to um, think about the, how large Samsung is, right? How, how huge they are, and but they're um, finding it advantageous to build an ice rink in Texas. So, if that's like, a, maybe that should be like the little logo of, of I'm dealing with patent trolls is an ice rink in Texas, you know? Um, so people think of it as, as crazy. So, um, so patent trolls um, don't come out of a vacuum, right? Patent trolls um, need to have a few things. They need to have an office, which is often basically a little um, broom closet in Texas. 
Um, I don't know if you guys have seen pictures, but they're basically little buildings with nobody in them and tiny little closets because it's very um, important for them to have an address in the jurisdiction where they can then sue a company. So they have a little broom closet, um, but then they also need um, patents. They need ammunition. And those patents come from operating companies. So um, if any of you guys have worked at a startup or a larger company um, that files for patents, maybe sells patents, uh, one of the unintended consequences, in nearly all cases, very unintended, is that those patents may be used in the future for um, purposes that your company uh, might not agree with. Um, say suing startups, um, may, maybe using them, um, and looking at the terms of that patent very broadly and saying, hmm, this patent on washing machine technology from 10 years ago could maybe apply to centrifuges because it has this kind of spinning motor and so forth. And, and that's what patent trolls do. They're, they're very clever people who, uh, I would use the term maybe misguided, or misguided, and want to use and be able to apply patents very broadly. So um, patent trolls acquire these patents from operating companies. So that's one, one of the, the places um, that the Lot Network looked to see how could we um, disable, how could we reduce the harm that patent trolls can have upon our companies. Um, the FOSCA community is very vulnerable. Um, I personally had no idea how much patent troll lawsuits cost um, before I joined the Lot Network. I have a bit of a background in um, software, um, in working with LibreOffice, um, on Ganache and other projects. And I knew that patents were expensive. I knew that dealing with patents were expensive. But I didn't know, um, for example, that if you're dealing with um, a patent troll lawsuit, it could be millions of dollars, about $3 million on average uh, for companies to, to defend that. Um, and this is on the scale of basically a problem where it's not that your company um, might go through hard times. It can go easily to a point where your company is basically bankrupt. Your, your, your company won't be able to, to proceed. And one of the issues with this is if you're a company like, say, Google, if you're a company like Amazon, you might think there are a lot of cool people um, doing really neat things out there and we want to acquire them in the future. But we want them to go out and innovate and then we can acquire them for a bunch of money, but we will be able to um, let them prosper, right? They want to sort of let, let, let the grass grow wild. But the problem with patent trolls is that small startups are very, um, um, very bright and very diverse, but they also don't have much of a war chest. So that means that they're an easy picking um, and, and large amounts of fees um, might make them either um, hold up their business or might make them decide to be very conservative, as I mentioned previously, about the fields into which they go and how much they stick their neck out into new technology. Um, the, um, as we move into a, um, a realm where we have um, hardware and software embedded in, in, in more um, pieces, um, the Internet of Things, into light bulbs, um, into our shoes, into our clothing even, um, the um, number of software patents, um, and the, the number of um, related patents on hardware is going to expand and is going to apply to a lot more things. And so um, this number up here, about two-thirds of all the patents that trolls are using being software patents. Um, I think that might grow a little bit, but I think the impact of that is going to expand greatly. Uh, so that if you want to innovate in the space, unless you're thinking about, you know, I want to sell old-timey um, washboards um, and, uh, and pants, which is interesting. I think there's one company selling washboards in the United States right now, and they're doing a great job of it. But that's a, sort of a small market, right? It's people who might want to wash their clothes at home off the grid, um, if people want to play a musical washboard. So if you want to innovate into our, our new digital world, um, you're going to have to deal with patent trolls. So, um, so small companies, um, as I mentioned, there's some of the, 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 the um, softest target for trolls. Um, half all the companies that are getting sued are making less than $10 million a year. Uh, and a patent troll lawsuit, as I mentioned, let's say it's around $3 million to defend one if you actually go to court. Um, in that case, that could m make a huge impact and possibly, again, um, you know, catapult your business into um, a very dangerous place um, if you had to deal with a lawsuit of that size. So um, the Lot Network is made up of a really diverse crowd of different companies. Um, you might know a couple of these companies. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have companies joining all the time. So uh, in the last couple of weeks, we had companies like eBay, Tesla, um, Electronic Arts. Um, who else? Um, Chrysler isn't on this list, I don't believe, but they joined. Uh, just, just little companies. So we've got a lot of companies who are realizing um, the duality of lot. On the one hand, they want to reduce the impact that patent trolls have. They want to avoid being sued themselves by patent trolls. But they also realize that uh, the lot network creates a more open, 
space, creates a community and a more uh, space with more breathing room, I'd say, for innovation to occur. Uh, because companies really do want that innovation to take place so they can acquire companies, so they can uh, partner with them, um, and they can advance their technology. Um, oh yeah, and here, here are a few more. Um, that. Uh, so we, we, what I find very interesting is we have a, a huge diversity. We've got banks joining because they're interested in patents on mobile banking, um, they're interested in patents on uh, um, various types of um, transfer um, technology. We've got startups joining. Um, we've even got brick and mortar stores who are dealing with all kinds of aspects of their web services joining like JCPenney and Macy's. So if you're currently working and if you're here, <laughs> here at Linux Northwest, you're probably working um, in high tech. But um, even if you're not, maybe, maybe you're going to transition um, your career in a couple of years, uh, those companies that aren't directly working in high tech right now, uh, dealing with patents and dealing with patent trolls is something that is very important to think about. Because if you don't have a strategy, um, it's quite possible uh, that someone will get a patent on some of the technology you're using in your, in, in your business. Um, and it might not even, even be technology that you, you developed yourself. So, for example, there were a number of nonprofits in New Hampshire that got sued because they were using all-in-one printers. So, um, pretty much everybody, especially a small business, has one of these, you know, fax machines, printers, scanners. And uh, a patent troll in Texas found public filings because there were nonprofits about how many employees they had, made up these demand letters, and fired them off by the bushel full um, to these nonprofits, guessing they didn't even know that they were using this technology. So, um, I think that that's something that will become increasingly um, problematic in the future, uh, where we will all have um, cell phones, which we pretty much all do right now, but we'll all have other technology embedded maybe in our um, footwear, maybe in our cars, maybe in parts of our houses. And so, um, whereas patent trolls might not go after individuals, it would be very easy for them, for them to go after startups and other companies and say, oh, you know that monitoring, monitoring technology used for security in your, uh, in your business? The thing that gives you an insurance break? The thing that does this? Yeah, we're going to go after you for that. Um, and they're going to find companies being the, really this, the soft spot um, rather than going after a manufacturer. Um, so that's, that's something that I think is going to grow and um, um, unless there are uh, drastic changes in legislation, which is not likely, um, it's a very contentious issue and it's very difficult to sort of push things through the legislative process in a way that, um, um, that we know it's going to come out at the other end. Um, so basically dealing with patent trolls is, is something that we're going to have to do um, for a while. As I mentioned, two-thirds of our uh, uh, lot members are startups. Um, working in a wide ver array of different technologies. Um, the Open Invention Network, as I mentioned before, um, is another uh, tool, I'd say, sort of in your arsenal in dealing with patents. Um, so there are a number of members, as you might expect, um, that, are, that are in both um, uh, the Lot Network and Open Invention Network. Do you have any clients yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So I've, um, I've talked briefly with a couple of the projects um, that are working on um, open medical records and um, um, one of the guys who worked on GNU Health and, and et cetera. And I've talked with them a little bit about that. Um, one of the things right now is that um, there are a lot of companies, and I, I understand their, their thinking, there are a lot of companies that have what I like to say is like the ostrich reflex and this is especially on the startup side, where they think that if they stick their head in the sand, then they can basically make things go away. And that is very frustrating from my perspective because um, while that, that might work, right, it's like playing craps, you know, like uh, if you keep on, keep on playing, right, like, you know, yeah, you might be safe. Um, but especially, um, um, I, I think it was mentioned this earlier in my talk, but um, there are a number of companies who have asked, you know, well, how can I um, basically benefit from this, but sort of hide myself away because I don't want any trolls to know that I exist. And I understand that tendency. Um, obfuscating yourself is kind of, a, kind of a, a clever thought. But the problem is that trolls, unfortunately, are, are really smart. Um, they're probably smarter than most of us because um, that's, it's their job to basically be like these little, um, these little weevils, you know, <laughs> burrowing everywhere. So um, I haven't directly talked to any hospitals yet. Um, I, I would love to. In fact, what we don't have in the lot network right now um, are patents and companies in um, biotech um, and in medicine in general. And I think that that's going to be um, that's like you know a talk or two in and of itself in terms of patents. Um, but yeah, in the, in, the, in the medical field and hospitals, I think that um, a lot of companies are going to see that um, the lot network yeah, is, is increasingly important to them. 
especially if they're relying upon critical technology um, like uh, embedded medical devices um, or external medical devices. Um, I think the one, the one saving grace right now is that although patent trolls largely don't care about anything, um, so their PR is basically nil because um, they, um, they, the way that they operate, the way that they, they work, um, it's very advantageous for them to have a, um, you know, a complete, <laughs> a complete lack of um, um, interest in, in the outcomes of, of other companies. Um, the one thing is I think that there are a few places, such as hospitals, um, where um, there, there might be some visibility and um, there might be, so, uh, there would be a lot of interest, I think, in uh, patent lawyers and others helping out the hospital if they actually got sued. Um, so I don't, I don't know of any hospital that's gotten directly sued. Deb, do you know about any hospital that's gotten sued? Uh, for patents? Yeah. Uh, well, there's the Prometheus and Mayo case with the, yeah. uh, and, and I think that one ended up in the Supreme Court and I think it, uh, basically it was a large pharmaceutical company that sued a neighborhood clinic yeah. for uh, a drug delivery method, which uh, the magic sauce in there was basically you inject the drug into the patient, and then you measure the level of some chemical in their body, and then and you, you wait a certain time or something. Yeah, yeah. Based on that. <laughs> yeah. Which is like not. It's. I know. But they <laughs> put it in a computer. Um, so, uh, and and the Supreme Court was like, uh, no, we're not going to make a neighborhood clinic pay you a lot of money for something that yeah. is just common sense doctoring. Um, and so I think that sent a pretty strong message that. When, like, you know, if you want to, you want to, like, destroy, like, a bunch of uh, beta male guys with computers, like, we, we might not get real teary, but if you're going to go after sick people, then right. we're going we're gonna to draw some right. lines around right. your activity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just, it's a more sympathetic yeah. case, and I think they're aware that it, like, going after sick people is really, like, like, low even for them. Right, which is which is weird so, because it, they said they had to, yeah. there had to be a case at the right. Supreme Court level yeah. to to establish that. To establish <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it's um as I said, it's 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 sort of amazing that there is a line for them, but <laughs> there there yeah, partially yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Hardworking so. people trying to get their company off the ground, like fair game. Six <laughs> so um so right so the uh, so the Open Invention Network um is um as I say sort of a. Um, a good friend, I would say, to, to the Lot Network, and a, a important tool um, in dealing with patent trolls. Um, and in fact, um, uh, Keith Bergelt is the CEO of OAN, um, and was it's been very supportive, um, which is great, um, in terms of how the Lot Network can help with anti-privateering, help companies deal with um, with patent trolls. Um, so the Lot Agreement is a contract, um, and it has some mechanisms um, that basically. Um, allow it to be effective at dissuading patent troll lawsuits. So um, basically, um, the lot agreement uh, provides a license that applies to um, the members of the lot network. The license attaches onto a patent, um, and when a company joins the lot network, um, all of your patents that you currently have, and patents that you may acquire or file in the future, um, are all covered under the lot agreement. And basically, this license says um, that it will only apply, it's a little, little sort of like caveat license, will only apply if the patent ends up in the hands of a patent troll. So that could happen um, through a number of means, for, through sale or through transfer, or if uh, a company becomes a patent troll itself. So as I said before, a patent troll we define as a company that makes 50% or more of its revenue um, from patent assertion, from suing other companies for patents. Um, so um, the, the lot agreement um, basically has a, a number of caveats. Um, and if you guys want to go into the legal nitty gritty, is not anybody a lawyer, by the way? Um, OK. I, I gave a presentation recently to a crowd of lawyers. So I was a little nervous because I was like, all right, like, if I use the term incorrectly, uh, <coughs> correct me, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, but basically the lot network, um, the lot agreement has a number of terms that basically help to make sure that um, one can enforce um, the lot agreement whenever this patent ends up in the hands of a patent troll. And what this does is it essentially immunizes your company, um, puts a shield up from any of those patents being used to sue you in the future. 
as we increase the number of companies in the lot network, um, this number goes up. So uh, beginning of this year, I want to say the number of patents in the network is around 600,000. Now it's around 680,000. Um, but as that's happening, that's not a static um, increase, essentially. So companies are buying and selling patents all the time. Companies like Google are acquiring companies and selling them off. So um, since the creation of a lot network, um, over 40,000 patents have left the network. So what that means is that means that if you are a company and you join um, today, for example, five, six months from now, there are going to be a certain number of patents that have left the network, but that you are still essentially immunized against. So this is a good motivation, I would say, for companies to join the network early and not to try to hedge their bets in the future and say, well, I'll join in the future. Well, if you join in the future, then any of those patents that might be very pertinent to your business um, might have left the network and then you couldn't get immunized essentially against those patents um, if you join later. Um, so the specific mechanics of the agreement, um, we've got this little, um, let's see if I can stand here so I can actually see what's going on. Uh, so we've got a couple companies um, in the lot network um, and one of the companies uh, sells a patent to a patent troll. So often what happens with companies is they're uh, not necessarily selling patents directly to a troll, but maybe they sell some patents. Like Google buys a company and they say this company uh, makes hoverboards, which are really cool, and they also make can openers because they've been a can opener company uh, for a long time. It's actually very interesting companies that get started. Like Lego got started with all these other toys, and now they make little plastic bricks, but they used to be like tin toys. So yeah, so a lot of companies may have a couple different business models, and uh, maybe, they, maybe they stopped doing one of the things they do. So they sell off, Google says, look, these patents are no longer relevant to us, we're gonna sell them off. Um, and those patents might end up in the hands of a troll. So at this point, when a patent ends up in the hands of a troll, license to lot uh, becomes effective. And in the future then, um, a troll can't sue anyone else in the lot network um, against that patent. Click down here. Uh, whoops, there we go. Um, so, um, I'm, my clicker is jumping ahead for me. There we go. Um, so even if the patent, <clears throat> excuse me, even if the patent is transferred to another company, and this is something sort of important to know that even if the patent is transferred in the future uh, to another company, even a company that's not a troll, um, that your company um, would still get a royalty-free perpetual license to that patent. So um, this is a very effective means of making sure that. Um, Basically, if a troll gets their hands on a patent, uh, that patent is basically uh, can no longer be used um, in perpetuity against companies in the network. Um, a troll might say, well, I'm going I'm I'm to give it to another company or sell it to another company and ask them to sue the network. You're out of luck. You can't do it anymore. Um, so it's a very effective means of stopping that, um, that, um, that line of attack on the lot network. Um, uh, another example, um, a couple companies join the lot network and they sell it to, again, an operating company. It's very common. But the operating company um, has an issue. They sell off the patents. They sell it to company B. Uh, maybe B goes bankrupt. So one of the common problems about patent transfer and contracts is that in a lot of cases, if a company goes bankrupt, um, any clauses or, or um, uh, agreements you have regarding that patent will expire. So even if you have an agreement with somebody, if they happen to go bankrupt, um, then uh, different agreements would have to be renegotiated or it would just evaporate. And at that point, then you're no longer protected from those patents that were maybe essential to your business. So the lot agreement is special in the way it's crafted that makes sure that it survives bankruptcy. Um, and so if it's transferred to a troll, then everyone inside the network um, is protected against um, the patent. So why lot? Um, so lot is, is very interesting in our mechanisms. Um, I think, again, made drawing from the aspect of simplicity and the aspect of laziness in computer programming. Um, we want to make things as simple as possible for people. So with lot, you don't have to list your patents. Um, you don't have to give notice. Um, you don't have to own any patents. We have a number of members like, say, Wikimedia Foundation. Not only do they not own any patents, they don't want to own patents. I've talked to them about this, and they're like, well, you know, like, yeah, we, we just, uh, uh, publish prior art and we publish these, uh, these, uh, these documents if we have technology we think might be patented. And I'm like, that's great, that's great. You can, you can do you, essentially. Um, and um, behind the scenes, we use some uh, patent reporting tools to essentially keep track of when patents end up in the hands of a patent troll. Um, so um, there aren't restrictions on your patent decisions. You can cross-license patents, you can buy and sell, um, you can free to sit on your patents. Um, we aren't um, 
instructing you as a company to do anything with patents um, yourself. Um, as I mentioned, there's full ba bankruptcy protection if patents are transferred through bankruptcy. Um, there's permanent immunization. So once that patent uh, um, ends in the hands of a troll, then your company, um, again, has a, has a royalty-free license to the patent in perpetuity. Um, and I think that we're unique in a way that we're a nonprofit. So that there are a number of entities out there um, that are structured to create um, patent consortia or patent pools. Um, but the Lot Network was set up as a nonprofit um, because there were a number of companies, Red Hat, Google, Canon, and others, who wanted to create this commons, create this space for uh, companies to avoid patent troll uh, problems. But they saw that if they set it up underneath themselves, uh, people might look at that and see um, and be concerned about conflicts of interest. They wouldn't necessarily um, assume off the bat, but they would be concerned about a conflict of interest. So, a lot being independent as a nonprofit, I think gives us a certain um, um, a certain oversight and gives a certain transparency to the process. So, um, one thing that I think is really important for companies in FOSS um, is ethics and. Um, and impression and, and how others view you. Um, transparency is really is becoming increasingly important to companies. If you look at the news headlines, um, you know, you, I, I'm often um, not always um, persuaded by entreaties from a CEO out there, like, we didn't know, we did something wrong. But I think that a lot of companies in, in tech, especially in, in, in um, freedom source software, um, are staffed, are managed by a lot of people who really, really do have um, strong ethics in their heart. And so one of the things about the Lot Network that I, that I like is the fact that you can join the network um, as, without any patents um, and largely as a, an investment in creating a space, creating more of a, of a technology space uh, that is free of patent trolls. So Wikimedia Foundation, as I mentioned, doesn't own patents, doesn't want to own patents. And they see benefit in reducing their risk with patent trolls, but they see equal benefit in encouraging a solution to dealing with patent trolls. Um, yeah? Is this global or US-only? Yeah, so the Lot Network um, covers all patent systems everywhere. So um, um, we, we've talked to companies in China, we've talked to companies, um, we have a number of companies in, in Europe, um, and if you have patents um, in European patent system or unitary patent system, um, then all of those will basically be covered underneath the Lot Agreement. One of, the, one of the great things is that um, when we're talking to a lot of companies, you know, some companies are hot, sort of more hot or cold about a lot. Uh, what's exciting is there's some, like say Newegg, um, who their chief patent counsel is like this firebrand about <laughs> dealing with patent trolls. In fact, he, um, there are a number of great stories about him. Um, one in which um, the Newegg house brand is Rosewell. And so someone decided to sue a whole bunch of, I think it was like USB hub manufacturers. Uh, and, and they said, oh, we're just going to basically choose a bunch of lists of these things. And, you know, they were not the smartest patent trolls because they included Roseville on their list. And someone pointed this out to them when they'd filed a, a, the suit, essentially, and listed all these uh, defendants. And someone said, you know that Roseville is Newegg's house brand. So they basically almost instantly tried to, like, pull them from the suit and, like, oh, we're not going to sue you anymore. And if I remember correctly, uh, Newegg's response, rather than being like, oh, cool, you know, we're no longer going to be sued, was, no, you can't do that. And they, they shot back a letter and was like, you sued us. So we're a part of this suit now. So I can't remember exactly how it all worked out. But basically, um, I think that the, the company was like, well, like, maybe we could just license our patent, you know, for like basically free to everybody and, you know, basically keep a hold of their patent. I, at that point, I think they were essentially afraid about losing their patent and losing money. And I can't remember if New Age basically was like, nope, like we're going ahead with this. But, but yeah, so there, there are a number of, a number of entities out there, um, m m several of whom are members of the Lot Network, um, who really have a, um, a fire in them um, about dealing with patent trolls. And so um, I am very heartened by that, um, that they are actively um, contributing to dealing with the patent troll problem, not just being sort of a passive um, component. Yep. You said that you've got uh, U.S. patents. You've got sure. 55k something like uh, that. I think that was a little out of date, but yeah, it's That's probably right. 300,000. So, yeah. And you have a definition of what a patent troll is. Yeah. Do you know how many patents are in the hands of patent trolls? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a slide in a little bit. So we've about um, as I said, it's it's someone over 40,000 patents have left the network. Um, and I think about 40 of those, I think, um, and I don't know the exact number right now, uh, have ended up in the hands of patent trolls. Um, so there's, that's 40 patents that if a company joined um, in 2014, you would be uh, immunized against. Not only immunized, but you'd have a, basically a free license forever for those patents. 
Um, and I think Intellectual Ventures has one of our patents um, as well from one of our companies. Um, Intellectual Ventures has a direct competitor. What? Intellectual Ventures has a direct competitor. They have it, no, but they have one of the, <laughs> they, they bought one of the patents. So one of the things that I found very interesting about this was um, that in a number of companies have said is, well, wait a second, you know, um, if I join the lot network, um, I'm going to be closing off a door to door for myself, which is selling patents to patent trolls. And I said, that's possible. Yeah, you could. But the fact that patent trolls are buying our patents is, I find, very interesting. Um, I mean, Intellectual Ventures is no slouch. So the fact that they bought a patent um, that's covered under the lot agreement is, is really interesting. And I think one of the reasons why they probably did that is that um, we're still relatively small. So um, I think the last count was 139 or 140 companies. So, I mean, you know, they're in terms of employees, I'd guess they're roughly about that many that many different companies represented here at Linux, Linux Fest Northwest. It's not the same same set, a little overlap. Amazon's here, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I I think that patent trolls realize that um, there is a there's still a vast frontier out there of companies um, that aren't a member of Lot and that can be sued. Um, so um, I think that um, patent trolls are, st are still seeing a lot of value in those patents. Um, but I think that as companies are joining the lot network, I think that um, an increasing number of um, trolls will realize, well, wait a second, you know, we've got companies that not only are members of the network, but they're also friends with Chief Patent Counsel at Newegg. Um, in fact, we, 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 um, my, uh, my boss has said, you know, it's, it, it's interesting that we, um, you know, because we have this community, um, you know, it's, it's, it seems very likely that basically patent trolls are shying away from us. Um, because they don't really want to get involved um, with the community that has that many patent lawyers, um, chief so, among it. So, so yeah. Don't want to yeah, yeah, sure. Time, but do you have a the other interesting statistic you had was yeah. that it cost three million dollars, and fifty percent of the companies that were targeted had less than ten million dollars in revenue. Yes, yeah, about half. Do, them, you, yeah. do you have a chart of that over time? Has it have they gotten smart? Presumably, they're getting smarter and they're going after smaller and smaller companies. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it really. Varies, yeah. I think it, it really varies about sort of what their goals are. Um, I think that uh, a number of startups are, are, are being sued. One of the frustrating things from a statistics perspective is there are a lot of things that we don't know about, right? So if companies actually do go to court, then there are filings and there's information. But a lot of this um, is all resolved with demand letters. So when we talk about patents, say on Android, there's a lot of speculation about who is approaching manufacturers of Android devices and saying, you know, we want some revenue off of that. Um, and occasionally some information comes out, there's a lawsuit, you know, there's a, someone drops a piece of paper in a journalist, you know, mailbox. But, but, but by and large, the world of patents, we don't know a lot about. And so, um, so we know a lot about um, the filings. And what I would argue is that larger companies are much more uh, willing and able to go to court. So if anything, I'd say that number is, is really skewed in terms of larger companies. So, sorry, you had a question there? Well, I just yeah. wanted to throw out yeah. I know that two years ago when the Microsoft was actually making new phones, sure. they made more money from license payments for patents sure. <laughs> than they've ever made on actual phones. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's going to be a, a common uh, a common uh, piece in the future if somebody has um, essential patents um, on a p particular technology. and. Um, you know, as, as, as Deb was mentioning, and, and Deb mentioned this as well in her talk yesterday, um, speaking about mobile phones, uh, it's a $5 phone? Is it really that cheap? Yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. It's, it's, it must be made out of, like, it, yeah. paper and, and, like, you know, chewing gum. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, as, as costs are decreasing, um, yeah, we're, we're going to get to a point where um, licensing makes up, you know, ever-increasing, uh, or could make up an ever-increasing chunk of that, um, of that item. And uh, and I think that we're gonna we're gonna run into some very interesting market effects um, where people are doing crazy things to try to um, circumvent uh, not circumvent patents I should say but up to to design around patents um, because it saves so much money in the overall um, cost of the item. Um, well, so. Big companies and they send out like a 
certain number of letters hoping <coughs> they do the math and hope to get like a ten million dollar suit and they figure they'll maybe win twenty percent of their suits yeah. so they have to send out ten ten million dollar suits into the world and then see them come back and, and so the, we're at that place where there are trolls for every niche in the market. Right. It's um, so so the market is mature. You would say. Yeah, sure. I can send you a paper on that one too. Um, but what's very interesting is that, and and again, what's um, I mean, it's you know, uh, kind of sort of the, the 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 capitalism we have at work, which is that because this is feasible and doable, people are someone's managing to do it. And um, um, what I find interesting, you know, the engineer engineer in me thinks of trolls as these amazing sort of creations, right? They found this niche, it's so it's so interesting. Um, but obviously that's just sort of, you know, like looking at mathematics and saying it's beautiful, um, but you have to temper that with how it's being applied. So, um, as some of you asked, um, you know, does a lot really work? Um, and as I mentioned, um, yeah, um, uh, actually we're here is, uh, is uh, 42,000 uh, assets that have been divested. Um, and yeah, that number is over 40 now, um, uh, assets that have ended up in the hands of trolls. Um, so yeah, no lot member so far has been sued. Um, by using asset from lot. So I think that um, the lot network is, is pretty uh, effective. And um, one of the other aspects is that um, when creating lot, uh, a lot of companies um, like Google said, look, you know, we're selling off patents, but we, we really want to make sure that um, our patents aren't having a negative effect on the community. And that's one of the big reasons why lot was, was formed in the first place, because they said, look, we want to reduce um, our impact. We want to create a space in which we can divest ourselves of, of patents we're never going to use, but make sure those can't be used uh, by trolls back at, uh, at startups. Yes? Um, just to check yeah. on that last sentence, does yeah. that mean the 42,000 assets or the 685,000 assets? Uh, that is, um, I believe, um, um, yeah, a lot of members have, have cross license, etc. I mean, that's um, uh, that that that's um, has there been sued by a patent troll? I think that should that should read. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, so so software companies, so high tech um, software companies, uh, what we're in. Um, as I mentioned, um, huge target for troll. Um, here's a note that blue is not uh, coming out there, um, but 62% um, of target companies have less than 100 million dollars in revenue, um, as Deb has mentioned. Um, there are a number of different trolls that are targeting different segments of the population. Um, so uh, the aspect is, 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 is um, um, it's frustrating, <laughs> I would say. Frustrating that uh, there are so many trolls out there that are targeting uh, companies of all sizes. So joining the network. Um, so joining the network um, is, uh, is, is uh, pretty simple. Um, if you're free, uh, if, you're a, if you're a startup, it's uh, free to join the network. We just want you to introduce us to a couple of your, um, of your friends. Um, and we've got a, a cap of about twenty thousand um, dollars if you're a huge company. Um, so we've got a, sort of a great um, a gate scale there. Um, if you're a startup, um, we just we really want startups to join because we really want startups to to be able to innovate in that space, as I've said before. So um, um, if you make a revenue of less than five million dollars a year, um, free to join. Um, we just ask you to introduce us to a couple of other companies that might be interested in lot, because we, as I said, we only have less than 150 members. So there's a large opportunity for growth to get other companies to join. Um, even, again, if you have one or two patents or, or zero patents, um, to basically join the network and grow this commons um, in which we are uh, dealing with patent trolls. Uh, so any questions? I think I'm still got a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead there. Uh, do you do anything to protect people who are sued? Uh, yeah, so, um, so right now the way the law network is set up, as I said, it's a sort of very, um, Say simple, but it's a very you know sparse uh, so, sort of um, approach, um, simplistic approach. Um, we don't currently um, have any uh, official structure for uh, for uh, companies that are being sued. Um, but my understanding is that there are a lot of companies, uh, such as Newegg, um, that are very interested in, in helping companies deal with patent trolls. Yeah. And one of the benefits, so on the one hand, while we'd love to grow, one of the benefits of, of our small size right now um, is that we do have a, a much uh, smaller network um, where we can direct um, uh, startups and small companies to talk to patent lawyers and other companies about what their options are and how they can they can deal with these demand letters. Um, I think I mentioned this earlier, but my perception right now, and um, I've only talked to a, a few companies, um, a handful of companies. My perception is that being a, just just being a member of the lot network is like putting a you know 
um, you know, you know, beware of guard dogs on your lawn, essentially. Um, the act of that um, is, is a, a good way um, for patent trolls um, to think twice about suing you because at the very least, you as a company have thought about dealing with patents. You have thought about dealing with patent trolls. And that alone, just, just that piece of information, I think, is, is really critical because companies, when they get a demand letter, they don't have a patent lawyer, they don't know what's going on, um, you know, they've got deadlines, they've got other, other issues going on, they, they, they um, very easily could panic or rush and say, you know what, we'll just pay the money because we want to get back to our core business. So um, they want to go after companies that don't understand the patent system. And I think that most companies that join the, the lot network um, have a little bit of an, of an individual strategy. Um, for dealing with with patents, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, right there. Talked a lot about like companies, right? But what about sure. like, the one person who put code on GitHub who doesn't maybe have a nonprofit or a company behind them? Sure, sure. They get sure. protected by the lot network, or if they get sued, do they just shut down their GitHub? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so as of as of right now, um, I I know that people have um, run into issues with patents, um, with 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 companies, whether they're patent trolls or, or not, in the past. Um, but I think right now, um, I I haven't heard a lot. Um, about individuals who aren't doing business directly, and most entities, not universal, who are doing business, um, have incorporated some kind of small um, company um, to work underneath, um, and that's a pretty simple process to sort of start that company. So um, there was a guy actually that um, um, patent patent lawyer at uh, Newegg helped out, uh, who was um, importing these uh, foam errors for LARPing, and so he, had, he was like a youth pastor or something and he had a small business selling these things and a company um, sued him and said you're infringing on our patent and he said these things have been produced for ages and et cetera, et cetera. So, but um, you know it was a side business but it was a small company so I think by and large um, patent trolls as, as far as, as in my experience have gone after you know a small company is sort of the smallest unit they go after um, and anything smaller it's um, a little harder for them to sort of find a surface to sue. So an individual taking yeah. donations yeah, I, I, I haven't really seen that. I don't know if Deb has seen uh, the issues with that. I but, haven't yeah. seen anyone successfully do that. There yeah. were uh, there was someone who had a couple of plugins for the, the GNU image manipulation uh, okay. um, processing thing, and um, and got a note from like I think a legal intern <laughs> saying like I think this infringes on a bunch of Borland patents, and he just took it down, and then finally ended up putting a sign on his website that said please stop asking me about them because I got a letter. Okay. So, um, so that's the first. But it's rare um, yeah. that a, what like a single individual, completely yeah. unconnected, yeah. Um, for if you're an individual contributing to a larger project, then it's more likely that they'll go up. Like yeah. so, if you're contributing to Fedora, they're not going to send a letter to you. They're going to send it to Red Hat. Yeah. Um, and Red Hat's in the network. Yeah. <laughs> Grandmother or something, yeah. Good look for us. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah. So like the individual contributor, yeah. the optics of that are not so great. So sure. like they usually try to, you know, at least a place with a mailbox. <laughs> so so yeah. like you can still be pretty small and get a letter. But sure. Like, yeah. Like usually not. There's like, there's a certain oh, scale. <laughs> Yeah, well, so so the um, the aspect there, it's it's, very, it's a good question. I haven't seen that happen really yet. I mean, you know, obviously, um, you know, if a lot network gets large enough, it might be tested. The the one concern I think in that space would be that um, you know, if a company want were to try that hypothetically, um, they would have to keep their nose very clean, because all it takes is one year for them to mess up, and then suddenly all their patents are suddenly in the lot network. So. They've lost that ability to sue other companies um, inside the lot network. So, yeah, yeah. So, and I'm not sure how they exactly control that revenue, um, but I mean, it's a, it's a good question. I think I think that uh, number was picked um, to try to create a balance because the lot network um, wasn't created to sort of solve everything all at once. It was really designed to deal with 
um, the aspect of patent trolls who have no surface, as I like to say, to sue. So if you're a company and you're making 50% of your profit from something other than patent trolling, I think that you're going to have surface somewhere and you're going to have PR. And at that point, then we can have a conversation, right? Because if you have PR, then that means that people really might want to know why you're suing uh, you know, a 12 year old or you're suing at least a small, you know, small company um, that's trying to do, you know, innovative things with 3D printing or innovative things with, um, you know, silicon uh, masking or something. So, yeah. Uh, back there. I think on that one as well, oh. the open source world has had a general patent problem that has been tackling a whole bunch of those areas and the patent trolls are always a problem because you couldn't trust them. And this is great because it lets you get over patent trolls. Yeah. In that, um, should the foundations be joining? So should the Free Software Foundation or Apache Systems ever be joining the Log Network? Yeah, I would, I would love to see them join. You know, um, the, I think one of the big aspects um, in terms of uh, creating more of an ecosystem um, is having those be leaders. So Wikimedia Foundation is sort of a, a first mover, a leader there. I would like to see more foundations uh, become members um, and be um, advocates, be active in saying, you know, this is something that we, we, um, that we have, a, have a common ground with. You know, it's, it, it, in, some time, it, in some ways it can be rare um, for the foundations to, um, to share uh, sort of a stage, share common ground with a lot of our, of our membership, member companies. You know, seeing, uh, say, Amazon Wikimedia agree on something, you, know, you might, might think, especially around something like patents, you might think is rare. But the reality is, this is the point, we, we have, there's a lot of consensus, right, around a lot of issues. Um, and sometimes it's a subset of those issues, but that's, that's space where we should start to actually forge agreement um, rather than uh, sort of taking a, you know, all or nothing approach. So, what? Uh, so the cost for a foundation, um, as I understand it, would be just similar to the regular fee schedule. So if there's $5 million in revenue or less, it's free. Otherwise, it's, I think, 1500 uh, bucks a year. Um, but um, one, of the, one of the aspects of that, too, is that you know, we have a number of, of companies that are really interested in um, bringing more uh, entities into the, into, the, um, um, into the network. So um, you know, I'd be happy to have conversations about how we could um, you know, make that possible if there's a financial aspect. Um, I think that you know if the foundation is making ten, fifteen million dollars a year, you know maybe fifteen hundred bucks is that much. So <laughs> when I, when I first started working the Lot Network actually, and I was looking at the numbers, and I was like, oh, like you know a thousand bucks here, and it's twenty thousand bucks, and I was like, those numbers seem you know large for me at least, but it's a billion dollar company. And then people are asking me like, do you know how much patents cost to file? And, you know, <laughs> and they're like, to successfully push you know a patent through it might be around twenty thousand bucks. And I was like, I thought normal people got patents, and they're like. Normal people might get a patent if they're working for a company that, yeah. So, um, so patents are sort of a whole different beast than copyright. Um, and it, you know, rather than copyright, you can just say, oh yeah, it's just automatically copyright. So, uh, there was another question. Oh, sorry, Tech. So, I just wanted to clarify exactly how it works. Yeah. Um, so, if if I have a uh, patent and yeah. uh, and then I get a letter from a troll that says, you know, give me give me the give me the money, pay off. Uh, you have a patent yourself, okay? Yeah. Yeah, or through my through my company. I yeah, sure. And I get the, the letter from the, the troll that says, okay, pay off. Yeah. And if I belong to the lot network, yeah. at that moment in time, I then transfer my patent to the lot network, and then you give me a license back on my patent. No, no. So, so the lot network is never, and this is one of sort of the, the interesting uh, pieces, the lot network acts as kind of like a facilitator uh, in, this, in this whole world. Um, we create the lot agreement. Um, we coordinate membership. Um, and and create various um, sort of aspects of community around this, but really um, the legal mechanics of how the uh, patent uh, transfer works and how this license, hence the lot network license on transfer works, um, is something that companies apply essentially to their own patents. So if you're a company and you have a patent, um, then usually that's not a patent that someone will use to sue you in the future. It's possible if you. Uh, transferred it with all rights and you didn't retain say a, a license for your company that could happen but um, the the generic case is more that you have a patent on making uh, you know whatever it is in my example I think previous was washing machines right and you then sell that patent off um, and you're a member of the lot network and, and Deb's also a member of the lot network so um, so then you know that patent passes through a couple of hands and suddenly a company um, uh, says you know who can we sue and they see that Deb is working on um, centrifuges and it's like oh like that's technology that also spins and has a motor and so it kind of looks like my patent so then they try to sue Deb at, the, at that point um, because you both remembers the lot network um, uh, Deb could show 
um, you know, basically the lot network would, would provide certification of that, that she was a member of the lot network, um, as were you, and that that patent is, um, has a provisio, has a little license on it that said that when that patent ended up in the hands of the patent troll, um, that both she and you got a royalty-free perpetual license to the patent. Does that, so does is, that make sense? So is that the key to it? Is it we have a royalty-free license to the patent and therefore the troll can't uh, so you, surface? Yeah, yeah. So that, that basically goes into effect whenever the, the patent ends up in the hands of patent troll. And so there are sort of three conditions. One is just a transfer um, or a sale, a sales type type transfer, or if a company um, as four, I guess, or, or goes bankrupt, survives that, which would affect the transfer, um, or if a company starts acting like a patent troll. So um, by and large, that doesn't happen. But um, but yeah, that's that's sort of the the scenarios in which um, the lot uh, agreement, the license of the lot agreement, um, will take effect. Um, but it, I like to say, it sort of sits to the side. You know, it lets you do sort of whatever you want with your patents. But it's just in that one case of patent trolls. We're we're creating this one little you know, very narrow focus, um, but encompassing all patents everywhere. So. Okay. So yeah. just on a strategy for small software sure. companies. Is it better for me not to file patents in the first place? That's a that's a great question. Um, I think that um, you know if you are concerned about so if you have technology right if you're developing um, uh, goods and services um, and, and 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 maybe software um, or hardware and you want to protect that um, in a, in a way then yeah a patent is a tool that you could use to protect that but. Um, a defensive publication is an, another way that you can protect yourself and others um, from that technology being used. And um, um, patents are very expensive. So you know, if you're a small business, filing patents is a really expensive way to protect yourself. It might be a good strategy, but it can be a very expensive way to protect yourself. Um, so that's something um, that uh, I think is definitely a good question for a patent lawyer. Um, or at least for a, uh, I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> for a lawyer that could maybe sort of explain some of your options about how you could use patents in other ways. Um, but it's one strategy, and, and if you do file patents, um, then yeah, you have a lot of flexibility about how you can use those patents. Um, so um, that, that can be a strategy in terms of, I mean, a lot of startups are basically creating a business model, filing a few patents, not usually a lot, filing a few patents, and that's a part of their um, how they describe themselves, right? The patents are kind of expressing their um, their goals as a business. One of the really frustrating things for me is the fact that patents, especially in software, uh, can be very nebulous. And so as a result, instead of describing and actually teaching people in the future about what it is you do and sort of the, the cool stuff you're working on, um, the patents um, become more of like a cudgel <laughs> that people can use in the future to um, sort of blanket anything similar to what you were doing, even if it wasn't really what even if it was centrifuges versus washing machines. So, yeah. Was there another question over here? Sorry. Yeah, I was wondering, you talked about bankruptcy. Sure, yeah. That a lot of cases in when any asset of a company going into bankruptcy, yeah. the bankruptcy court can break any agreements that were previously signed. Do you have sure. any patents that were in the network gone to the bankruptcy court? That's a good question. I don't know that, but um, I, as uh, have no indication that they have ever broken out of bankruptcy. So um, the little I know, here I'll pretend to be a lawyer for a second. So there are a couple kinds of uh, contracts and agreements and one is called a springing license and then there's another kind. And ba basically one of them is activated um, um, when um, something happens like a transfer um, and then I think that's not the springing license. I think the springing license would be for example if the lot agreement hypothetically were to come into effect um, when you got sued, okay? So um, people have tried to use those in the past. We're like, oh, okay, you, know, you can do whatever, but if I get sued, then, you know, boom, you, 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 you broke it, and, and, and now everyone, you know, and now the patent's no longer um, something that, that can be used. I think that type of, um, um, that type of license um, wouldn't survive bankruptcy, and that's sort of the nuance here, that if you, if you the lot agreement was specially crafted um, so that it happens when it ends up in the hands of a patent troll on transfer, and that, it, that type of contract will survive uh, bankruptcy and other types of transfer, um, which is, um, again, something I, I really don't know much about, but it's fascinating. So um, I'm trying to learn more about patents, and it's like, read the 600-page book, you know? It's only, it's, it's, it's only just annotated decisions by the um, uh, you know, Federal uh, Court of Appeals or whatever, and I was like, yep, that'll be some light bedtime reading when I want to go to bed. <laughs>
so um, yeah I, I feel like I'd just be like all I need is like five photocopy pages right so like I, I'd get like through half a page and be asleep it'd be great I think another question over here oh, okay um, well great well thank you guys for attending um, I've got a, a booth over um, in the um, exhibit hall um, that's right next to the stage if you're facing the stage it's right and left um, and I'll stick around for comments here as well answer any questions but um, Take away, please uh, think about patents, um, think about patent trolls, and if you have a startup or a company, um, come up with a strategy that might involve us, it might involve OEN, um, might involve multiple things, but just uh, don't stick your head in the sand. So, thanks.